I'm going to take a look at a Canadian IMP or individual meal pack. This one is a very simple name. It's menu number seven, very simply, hamburger, and it's from 2014. Just to let you know, this one has been opened. I actually did a test of uh, the waterproofness or water resistance of uh, an IMP, and if you'd like to see the results of that test, I'll put a link to the video down below in the description. But anyway, here we have a Canadian individual meal pack. It comes in this uh, brown paper bag with a foil lining. And inside you have the uh, entree on the side, or the entree and the dessert, in their cardboard boxes on either side, with everything else stuffed in between, to kind of give it the appearance of being sort of like it's in a box. As I said, this one's from 2014, and I should also mention that this one is another one that came to me very generously from Black Dog Bob of Black Dog Survival School and MREinfo.com. Thank you very much, Black Dog Bob. Let's see what we have in this one. Here we have hamburger. And here are the ingredients in both French and English. And the nutrition facts. Pause here if you want to read those. Because I don't see anything on the outside here about uh, the manufacturer, I'm going to guess that this is Baxter's a Canadian company. Some of these are manufactured by US companies. And this one has the Canadian five digit date code instead of the Julian code that the US MREs use. So this one was packaged on the 339th day of 2013. And for a side we have bean salad. A lot of these have uh, fruits, uh, a wet pack fruit. Uh, so this, uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. I've never had the uh, bean salad before. There's the ingredients and the nutrition facts. And this one is packed on the 301st day of 2013. Also have, to go with our hamburger, we have a hamburger bun, also known as a pain hamburger, or pan hamburger, or bread hamburger in French. I have not had one of these before either, so I'm looking forward to this. I know they put these uh, hamburger buns in some things that don't seem to really require a hamburger bun, but since this one actually is a hamburger meal, it seems to make a lot of sense. Now, oh, this is kind of interesting. Here we have Reese's Pieces, peanut butter candy. This is a, uh, a U.S. commercial uh, item, uh, but unlike the U.S. MREs, this one actually comes in the military packaging. Means it was packed by over here. And this does have a date code on it of 13269. We have two Fruit Punch sports drinks. They do give you two of these, which is a nice, uh, nice little touch, but they only uh, make 250 milliliters each. These have a different uh, day code on them, a different way of writing it. It's like the 220th day of 2013. So both of those. There's mustard. It makes sense for the uh, hamburger. Also has its own day code. And there's uh, espresso roast coffee. That's nice, instead of just a standard instant coffee. No oh, Arabica coffee. And some uh, whitener, a creamer for tea and coffee. And we also have a pack of sugar. And I should mention that the sugar and the moist towelette are a couple things I was a bit concerned about with the, uh, the waterproof test. And the moist towelette, actually, the packaging did get wet, and it seemed like it may have um, been a problem. So I did want to open this one and make sure it's okay. It seems to have dried up okay, though. And we also have peanut butter, and this probably is, oh, actually it's ketchup. So we have ketchup and mustard for the hamburger, and then a random peanut butter for whatever you want to use that for. You can just eat it right out of the pack, I suppose. Or, of course, you can have your hamburger open face and keep the hamburger bun for the peanut butter. And we have, in addition to the instant coffee, we also have a vanilla cappuccino from Nescafe. That's nice. Yeah, it looks like it even makes a little uh, foam on the top. Yeah, we have a Frank's Red Hut hot sauce. I notice the IMPs seem to have these in here a lot. So the Canadians get their Frank's Red Hut and the U.S. Uh, get the uh, Tabasco. And a few more things here. We have uh, Icebreakers Frost Mints. Leave this two in there. Pack of matches. 
a nice Canadian hot beverage bag, or I, should, I always say that, but it's actually just a beverage bag. It doesn't specifically say it's for hot beverages because they don't have a uh, famous ration heater in here. And of course, the thing that's nice about this is that the bottom opens up and so it can actually stand up on its own. And we have a large, uh, whatever you want to use it for, a napkin, uh, could be toilet paper, could be a place setting, could be a fire starter, it could be whatever you need it for, but I'm going to consider it a uh, napkin or tissue. And finally, the IMP spoon, the big long spoon. Uh, of course, that's useful for getting into these deep pouches, but the thing that's kind of funny about it is it's not really all that much longer than a US MRE spoon. It just it looks really long, but I think it's partially because it's kind of narrow here. The bowl is slightly smaller, but I did actually just measure these out, and the uh, IMP spoon is just about an inch longer. So, I mean, it's definitely longer, but it's not like it's crazy or anything. So, as you usually see with an IMP, you get a, a good amount of food of this. Uh, what I'm going to do is, since the uh, meal does not come with a Flemish ration heater or a stove or anything, this, of course, uh, a lot of these elements are ready to eat, and you can just eat them cold, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this in some hot water. It is indeed Baxter's, and the cooking instructions, which to me I think it should just say heating instructions, uh, just says to, uh, actually the instructions say to put it in boiling water. It's Baxter's of Canada. And once again the date code, 1339. Being salad, I'm going to guess you're going to have that cold, so I'm going to have it anyway. So let me heat this up and we'll uh, check everything else out. As I had said, they do give you two sports drinks, each making uh, 250 mils. Uh, for the sake of the, the uh, review, I'm just going to make up one, but of course we know there is a second one if we need it. One thing you have to be careful about with these bags is making sure that if you're using these fill lines, they have one for hot chocolate and one for a sports drink. You just want to make sure that you um, have the bottom open, or at least have the bottom open up while you're putting in the, uh, the water to make sure you get an accurate measurement. Nice uh, sugary kind of a fruit punch smell. I'm going to add 250 mils, see how close that is to the uh, fill line on the bag. Yeah, that's pretty close. And as you can see, right away, you can see the benefit of having the, uh, the bottom that opens. You don't necessarily need to have a cup for this. You can shake it up in here, mix it up in here, and then just uh, drink it right out of the bag. Give that a good shake. And since I am in the comfort of my own home, instead of drinking out of the bag, we'll put it in a glass. A little bit left over. And while we're at it with the beverages, I'm also going to make up the vanilla cappuccino. quite nice. This has kind of a, a caramel kind of a smell to it. And the espresso roast coffee. Which does seem to uh, smell a little bit different from the standard instant coffee you get in a MRE or other rations. I'm going to go ahead and add the whitener. and the sugar. Of course, obviously you don't have to do that. That black coffee, you can just have it as is. And you can sweeten it to your taste, but you gave me these things, so I'm just going to go ahead and use them.
even without stirring it, and you already have the foam on top of the uh, cappuccino. But I'll give that a nice stir anyway. We have our Reese's Pieces peanut butter candies. I don't know if having them in this type of a pouch gives them more protection than when they're in the commercial packaging like you see them in the US MREs. They seem to look okay. A little bit of a... not sure what that is exactly. Sugar or something. Yeah, it's actually a, some kind of weird little film that's on a lot of them. It's probably just the oil from the peanut butter that leaked out. Actually, it is one that's cracked, so I'll bet that's all it is. I bet it's just oil from the peanut butter. I don't know if I had mentioned it, uh, but the napkin, paper towel, whatever you want to call it, tissue, uh, it actually did get very wet. It was sopping wet, actually, when I did the uh, waterproofing test. And I had to dry that out, but it's fine now. It's just water. Now we'll take a look at the bean salad. There seems to be a good amount in here. Looks like it's 225 grams. I would say this pouch uh, it has quite a bit of air in it. Uh, if there's anything, you know, you do have to be careful with the uh, rations, especially older ones. This one's only two years old, so I'm not too concerned about it. But when they start bulging. And this one's not bulging, but it does uh, it does have a bit more air than I'm used to seeing in uh, a lot of these retort pouches. And we have uh, beans. We'll take a look at the ingredients and see what's in there. But it looks like I see chickpeas, carrots, not a bean really, but that looks good. I'm used to bean salad being cold, and I. I have a feeling it's supposed to be, but um, it seems like it would be good heated up too. Not sure what others have done with uh, with this salad. Yeah, it looks like we have water, balsamic vinegar, red beans, chickpeas, white beans, red bell peppers, onions, corn, yellow sugar, yellow sugar, olive oil, salt, herbs, garlic puree, and a few other things. Yeah, it looks good. And then we have our hamburger bun. This is something, if I had been using a Flint's ration heater, I probably would have uh, tried to heat this up to see if I could make it a little bit softer, but um, yeah, it looks like a hamburger bun. Seems to be... You know, I was going to say like whole wheat, but it's pretty light inside. It's not a very soft thing, but it's, it seems to be kind of a nice alternative to a uh, wheat snack bread that you find in the MREs. It's somewhat closer to uh, what you would consider real bread. And I've seen in other reviews that they don't slice these all the way through. It is definitely sliced, but for some reason they only go like halfway, so I'm just going to give it a little bit more. A little more help here. And there's our hamburger bun. We also have ketchup and mustard for that. And of course the peanut butter, which I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with the peanut butter, but we'll use it for something. And the hot sauce. And all we have left is our icebreakers frost mints. I guess these are here in lieu of the uh, toothpick that you sometimes see in IMPs. And these are good. I've had these before. So that's about it. Now let's take a look at our hamburger. And here it is. I'm going to guess I can feel actually that there's some juice in here. This is incredibly hot. Uh, because of the juices, I don't want to get the bun all soggy. So I'll just get that out of the way while we plate this. Say it reminds me of the uh, beef patty in the MRE, but it's a little bit different as far as the spices. How they smell. That's looking pretty good. Can't quite tell if this is two separate patties. It almost, yeah, it is two separate patties. And you can see it has the uh, grill marks on it like the uh, US MREs do. 
and around both sides. Let me just show you both of them. And I've seen a number of rations where they include what they call patties, whether they're pork patties or hamburg patties or beef patties, and it only has one. So this is actually interesting that this does have two in it. They're pretty small. You see they're quite a bit smaller than the bun, but uh, they look good. I mean, it's a hamburger patty and I, the grill marks are kind of a nice touch. All right, let's try this out before it starts uh, getting too cold. I'm gonna give uh, the burger a little taste on its own before adding anything. See, it looks like your standard chopped beef uh, burger. Nothing uh, really to report on that. Looks like it should. And it tastes good. The, uh, the sauce is nice. It's got a nice... Uh, I guess it, you know, it kind of has the grilled flavor. I think it's something that they added to give it that, but it, uh, it gives it a nice smoky kind of flavor. Let's see if we can show you the inside of it. Right there. That's pretty tasty though. And I do definitely want to do this as a burger. I recently did a review of a uh, trekking burger, cheeseburger in a can, and uh, already this is uh, quite a few steps above that. You can see the one burger, because it's a little tiny on the bun. I think if I was doing this out in the field, I'd just go ahead and make a double burger out of it. But um, it's because of the way I want to review this and try things out. I'm just going to put one on here. And now they know what it tastes like, I'm going to add a little bit of ketchup and mustard to that. Interestingly, the ketchup also, it's another thing that has a lot of air in it. I'm not sure how much ketchup is actually in here, but this, for whatever reason, there's a lot of air in the pouch. That smells like ketchup, though. A little ketchup on there. And a little mustard. And we have a very American type dish. I'm going to try it like this before adding the uh, hot sauce. And then we have our hamburger ready to go. Let's give that a try. That's good. That's a good hamburger. If this um, if the meat didn't uh, live up to your expectations, you weren't crazy about just the uh, the patty itself. I'd say the ketchup and the mustard do a good job of hiding it. It's pretty much all. It seems like it's almost all I'm tasting, but I do get some of the burger in there, and it's a uh, it's a very good burger. You have no complaints about that. Let me try some of this uh, coffee. Yeah, and despite being espresso roast coffee, it really pretty much just tastes like a standard instant coffee. Nothing wrong with it, but nothing too special about it. And of course, as I always say, I have to uh, mention that I'm not a coffee drinker, so uh, I'm also not the best judge of exactly how good a bad a coffee is. Uh, I really like the burger as it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just dress up this other patty with a little bit more ketchup. I'm gonna use most of it up on the uh, on the burger. A little more mustard. And try out the uh, Frank's Red Hot. Which should definitely change the experience somewhat. Let's give that a try. With all the accoutrements. Yeah, that certainly adds a different element to it. It's, uh, I really don't think it needs it, but if you're a fan of hot sauce, then obviously that's going to help everything. And considering I'm not really a fan of hot sauce, I'm not finding it too overwhelming either. It's actually kind of nice how it kicks it up. Try some of this bean salad. 
so we can get a little bit of everything on my spoon. Try that out. Curious as to uh, what other people think about uh, whether this should be heated or not. It definitely doesn't need to be, but it wouldn't hurt. It does make for a nice side for a hamburger. A little bean salad. Yeah, that's good. There's nothing special. There isn't a lot of flavor to that. But it's got a bunch of different kind of beans. It's not just like uh, having a plate full of beans. There's, uh, there's quite a bit in there. Nothing wrong with that. And actually, I'll bet the uh, having it with some of the hamburger sauce would be even better. And that does give a little bit more flavor. And of course, we do have to uh, try that out with the hot sauce, too. Now, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of spicy stuff, but um, that does kind of uh, kind of add to the flavor. So the flavor itself is a little bit on the bland side without it. And also have uh, the inclusion of peanut butter. Nothing to really put it on. So if you needed a little bit of protein, needed a little bit of a snack on the go, you could always just rip this off and just uh, eat it right out of the pouch. And I guess that's what I'll do now. And it's good. It's good. Uh, nice smooth peanut butter. You can see it right there. Last one I had didn't really mix up that well. This one uh, mixed up pretty good, and it's all uh, back to normal over here, looking like it should. Let me get a little more of that burger. It's good. Let's try this vanilla cappuccino. That's yeah, pretty tasty. Even for a uh, non-coffee drink like myself. Definitely has a little more flavor to it. I don't really taste that caramel that I thought I smelt in the uh, powder, but it does have a little bit of a vanilla taste to it. And then we have our Reese Pieces, which uh, it is kind of strange how, even though they're in sort of a retort pouch, they didn't seem to survive all that great. Uh, maybe it's because one or two cracked and the oils from the peanut butter get out. Maybe a problem you wouldn't have with M&Ms with the chocolate, but uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. just a little bit of oil on them. They don't look quite uh, perfect, but they taste absolutely fine. Wash it down with the uh, fruit punch. That's good too, very similar to a uh, MRE fruit punch drink. It's slightly different, but it still has that Kool-Aid kind of a flavor to it. Yeah, I would just say everything in here was good. That was a look at a Canadian IMP. Menu number seven, hamburger, from 2014. Thank you for watching. Well, I was finishing up and realized I did forget a couple things. First, I did uh, save a little bit of the uh, hamburger bun to put some peanut butter on just to give that a try so we get some uh, peanut butter on bread. And of course, I did try both of those separately. It's not like it was a big surprise, but it's good. And the bread isn't super soft, but for something that you know comes in a package that's a couple years old, it's really not that bad. The package does have the uh, oxygen absorber in there. It tastes like it maybe actually it feels more like it tastes a little bit like it's on the stale side because it's a little bit on the hard side, but it's uh it's pretty good and it's a nice alternative to wheat snack bread. And of course, I also forgot the uh, ice mints frost, which is a nice way to finish things up. It is a mint. I'm not going to actually bite into this one. The last ones I bit into, and I think it's better to just suck on them and savor it a little bit. So thank you again for watching. These fill lines, they have one for hot chocolate and one for a sports drink. You just want to make sure that you... Um, have the bottom open, or at least have the bottom open up while you're putting in the uh, the water to make sure you get an accurate measurement. Nice uh, sugary kind of a fruit punch smell.
I'm going to add 250 mils, see how close that is to the uh, fill line on the bag. Yeah, that's pretty close. And as you can see, right away, you can see the benefit of having the, uh, the bottom that opens. You don't necessarily need to have a cup for this. You can shake it up in here, mix it up in here, and then just uh, drink it right out of the bag. I'll give that a good shake. And since I am in the comfort of my own home, instead of drinking it out of the bag, we'll put it in a glass. A little bit left over. And while we're at it with the beverages, I'm also going to make up the vanilla cappuccino. It smells quite nice. This has kind of a, a caramel kind of a smell to it. And the espresso roast coffee. It could be a fire starter, it could be whatever you need it for, but I'm going to consider it a uh, napkin or tissue. And finally, the IMP spoon, the big long spoon. Uh, of course, that's useful for getting into these deep pouches, but the thing that's kind of funny about it is it's not really all that much longer than a US MRE spoon. It just it looks really long, but I think it's partially because it's kind of narrow here. The bowl is slightly smaller, but I did actually me just measure these out and the uh, IMP spoon is just about an inch longer. So, I mean, it's definitely longer, but it's not like it's crazy or anything. So, as you usually see with an IMP, you get a, a good amount of food of this. Uh, what I'm going to do is, since the uh, meal does not come with a flamish ration heater or a stove or anything, this, of course, uh, a lot of these elements are ready to eat, and you could just eat them cold, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this in some hot water. And it is indeed Baxter's. And the cooking instructions, which, to me, I think it should just say heating instructions, uh, it just says to, uh, actually the instructions say to put it in boiling water. It's Baxter's of Canada. And once again, the date code, 1339. And being salad, I'm going to guess you're going to have that cold, so I'm going to have it anyway. So let me heat this up and we'll uh, check everything else out. As I had said, they do give you two sports drinks, each making uh, 250 mils. Uh, for the sake of the, the uh, review, I'm just going to make up one. But of course we know there is a second one if we need it. One thing you have to be careful about with these bags is making sure that if you're using I'm going to take a look at a Canadian IMP, or Individual Meal Pack. This one is a very simple name. It's menu number seven, very simply, hamburger, and it's from 2014. Just to let you know, this one has been opened. I actually did a test of uh, the waterproofness or water resistance of uh, an IMP, and if you'd like to see the results of that test, I'll put a link to the video down below in the description. But anyway, here we have a Canadian Individual Meal Pack. Comes in this uh, brown paper bag with a foil lining, and inside you have the uh, entree on the side or the entree and the dessert in their cardboard boxes on either side, with everything else stuffed in between to kind of give it the appearance of being sort of like it's in a box. As I said, this one's from 2014, and I should also mention that this one is another one that came to me very generously from Black Dog Bob of Black Dog Survival School and MREinfo.com. Thank you very much, Black Dog Bob. Let's see what we have in this one. Here we have hamburger. And here are the ingredients in both French and English. And the nutrition facts. Pause here if you want to read those. Because I don't see anything on the outside here about uh, the manufacturer, I'm going to guess that this is Baxter's, a Canadian company. Some of these are manufactured by U.S. companies. And this one has the K1 
Canadian five-digit date code instead of the Julian code that the USMREs use. So this one was packaged on the 339th day of 2013. Oh, Arabica coffee. And some uh, whitener, or creamer for tea and coffee. And we also have a pack of sugar. And I should mention that the sugar and the moist towelette are a couple things I was a bit concerned about with the, uh, the waterproof test. And the moist towelette, actually the packaging did get wet and it seemed like it may have um, been a problem. So I did, did want to open this one and make sure it's okay. It seems to have dried up okay though. And we also have peanut butter. And this probably is, oh actually it's ketchup. So we have ketchup and mustard for the hamburger. And then a random peanut butter for whatever you want to use that for. You can just eat it right out of the pack, I suppose. Or of course you can have your hamburger open face and keep the hamburger bun for the peanut butter. And we have, in addition to the instant coffee, we also have a vanilla cappuccino from Nescafe. That's nice. I mean, it looks like it even makes a little uh, foam on the top. And we have a Frank's Red Hut hot sauce. I notice the IMPs seem to have these in here a lot. So the Canadians get their Frank's Red Hut and the U.S. Uh, get the uh, Tabasco. And a few more things here. We have uh, Icebreakers Frost Mints. Leave this two in there. Pack of matches. A nice Canadian hot beverage bag. Or I, should, I always say that, but it's actually just a beverage bag. It doesn't specifically say it's for hot beverages because they don't have a uh, famous ration heater in here. And of course, the thing that's nice about this is that the bottom opens up and so it can actually stand up on its own. And we have a large, uh, whatever you want to use it for, a napkin. Uh, could be toilet paper, could be a uh, place setting. And then for a side, we have bean salad. A lot of these have uh, fruits, uh, a wet pack fruit. Uh, so this, I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. I've never had the uh, bean salad before. This is the ingredients and the nutrition facts. And this one is packed on the 301st day of 2013. Also have to go with our hamburger. We have a hamburger bun, also known as a pain hamburger or pan hamburger or bread hamburger in French. I have not had one of these before either, so I'm looking forward to this. I know they put these uh, hamburger buns in some things that don't seem to really require a hamburger bun, but since this one actually is a hamburger meal, it seems to make a lot of sense. Ah, oh, this is kind of interesting. Here we have Reese's Pieces, peanut butter candy. This is a, uh, a U.S. commercial uh, item, uh, but unlike the U.S. MREs, this one actually comes in the military packaging. This was packed by over here, and this does have a date code on it of one three two six nine. We have two fruit punch sports drinks. And they do give you two of these, which is a nice, uh, nice little touch, but they only uh, make two hundred fifty milliliters each. These have a different uh, day code on them, a different way of writing it. It's like the 220th day of 2013. So both of these. There's mustard. It makes sense for the uh, hamburger. Also has its own day code. And there's uh, espresso roast coffee. That's nice instead of just a standard instant coffee. 